Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. Today's video is going to be my birthday book haul. It's actually my birthday today so happy birthday to me and this past weekend myself and my husband James went away um, to celebrate my birthday and I bought some books and then I treated myself to a few other books and it was one of those situations where until I got them all together I hadn't quite appreciated how many books I had managed to accumulate so to make sure that this video doesn't end up being really really long I'm going to do away with the preamble and just jump in and start talking about the books and because there is so many I'm going to try really hard to be concise tell you what I know about them and not waffle on too much so you might want to grab a drink and a snack but let's jump in. So first up we have The Shadow King by Marza Mengiste. First of all, can we take a moment to admire this stunning, stunning cover? So this is historical fiction and I am always interested to discover new historical fiction books based on real events. This is set in 1935 and we are following the Italian invasion of Ethiopia. So it intrigued me right away because that is something that I have not read much about. I learnt about Mussolini's army in school but not really the extent so very very intrigued by that. We are predominantly following three characters, a soldier in Ethiopia's army, his wife who was a child bride and resents her husband and an orphan who works as a servant for this couple but is driven to become something more by the increasingly desperate situation as it unfolds and develops. I have heard very good things about this. I've heard that it is lyrical, that it's beautiful, that it's epic, so I'm very excited to have a copy. Then we have A Necessary Evil by Abir Mukherjee. This is the sequel to A Rising Man which I read and enjoyed last year. These are detective murder mystery stories set in the 1920s in India and we are following Captain Sam Windham and his partner Sergeant Surrender Not Banerjee who once again have to work together to solve a murder which isn't quite as it seems. Um, Captain Wyndham is your typical troubled detective in these books. He has an opium habit which threatens to ruin his career so they are a little bit cliche but I really enjoyed the setting, I enjoyed the colourful characters, they're slightly different from other detective murder mysteries that I've read before so I'm excited to jump into this one and I've heard that these books get better and better as you progress through the series as well so very much looking forward to picking this one up. Then we have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I have already read and reviewed this. I will leave a link to my wrap up in the description bar down below if you are interested in my full thoughts. Very briefly, this is a fantasy about two sisters, two princesses, one who has been raised and prepared her whole life to marry an immortal lesser god called the God King and one who cannot do as she is told and when the second sister is sent to marry the God King instead of the first our story begins. There is also quite a unique and complex magic system which I cannot summarise better than it does on the back so I will really quickly read that to you. Theirs is a world in which those who die in glory return as gods, a world transformed by biochromatic magic, a power based on an essence known as breath, which can only be collected one unit at a time from individual people. But it's worth it. By using breath and drawing upon the colour in everyday objects, all manner of miracles and mischief can be performed. So there you go, I'm not going to say too much more on that. If you want my full thoughts, you can hop over and watch my wrap up. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, another book that I have already read. I haven't yet reviewed this, I'll be reviewing it at the end of May. I loved this book and it is going to be very difficult for me not to review it now and gush about it because I just thought it was so, so good. This is historical fiction based on the life of Hamnet Shakespeare, the son of the William Shakespeare and his wife Agnes and supposedly the 
inspiration behind the very well-known Shakespeare play Hamlet. It is beautiful, it's lyrical, it's moving, it's heart-wrenching, it's just so so good. I will give you my full thoughts at the end of the month but I loved it so so much. Then we have Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This is a book which was sent to me by the publisher, so thank you very much for my copy. It's contemporary fiction about 22-year-old Ava who leaves her home in Ireland, moves to Hong Kong and takes a job as an English teacher. And she meets a banker called Julian who is several years her senior and enters into a fairly questionable relationship with him. Things are made more complicated when Julian goes away for an extended period of time and Ava meets and develops a relationship with a young lawyer called Edith. I think that this is very much a story of Ava discovering who she is. I think she leaves her home in Ireland because she's dissatisfied with the way that her life is and she wants to rediscover herself in a new setting. I've heard that it's sharp, that it's witty, that it's entertaining. So thank you very much for my copy and I'm sure that I will get to it soon. If you've been around my channel for a while then you will know that I love a good Greek mythological retelling. For me Madeline Miller is queen but I'm always on the lookout for new books to pick up so I have got The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a retelling of the Iliad from the point of view of the Trojan women who have been captured by the Greeks. I've heard that it's a little bit on the darker side compared with other books on the market in this particular area but very excited to read it. I absolutely loved Circe, I absolutely adored the Song of Achilles so yeah I'm just very excited to have another Greek mythological retelling to add to my TBR. Along similar lines I was obviously on a little bit of a retelling hunt when I bought these. I also picked up The Children of Jocasta by Natalie Haynes. This was recommended to me after I read and reviewed A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes and said that I loved the writing style but the way that it was broken up into short stories was a little bit jarring for me and I would have liked a fuller narrative to really get hooked into and someone said oh you must try The Children of Jocasta. So again this is a mythological retelling. It's the story of two essentially forgotten women uh, based on the myths of Oedipus and Antigone. Uh, it says casting fresh light on these ancient and engrossing stories. So we follow two women Jocasta and Ismene as well. So yeah just another one that I'm very excited to have. For me I don't know why, I don't know if it's because I read Circe in the summer but the kind of warmer seasons are always the time when I really want to get stuck into something fantastical and mythological so The Silence of the Girls and this one will definitely be on my summer TBR. I'm very very excited to read them. Sometimes I come across a book and I get this feeling that I don't want to know too much about it and I want to just go in as blind as possible and this next book is definitely giving me those vibes. It is The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. So this is a YA fantasy about a young girl called Decca who very much feels like an outcast in her village and all she wants is to belong and it says on the inside flap Decca lives in fear of the blood ceremony that will determine whether she can become a member of her village. If she bleeds red, she will belong, but on the day of the ceremony her blood runs gold, the colour of impurity of a demon. The consequences force Decca to leave her village with a mysterious woman destined to join an army of girls like her. They are lackey, girls who are near immortals with rare gifts and the only ones able to stop the Empire's greatest threat. But as she journeys to the capital to train for the battle of her life, Decca discovers the great walled city holds many surprises. Nothing and no one are quite what they seem, not even Decca herself. Are we girls or are we demons? Are we going to die or are we going to survive? I mean, it says on the back, fans of Children of Blood and Bone and Black Panther are going to adore this. Loved both of those, so very, very excited to jump into this one at some point soon. Another one that I picked up when I was doing my looking for mythological retellings was The Glass Woman by Caroline Lee. This has been compared to Jane Eyre and Rebecca. It's set in 1686 in Ireland and we're following a young woman, Rosa, who moves to an extremely 
isolated village when she marries her husband and she is immediately viewed by the locals with mistrust. Her husband's first wife died very recently in mysterious circumstances, there are noises coming from the locked attic, she's given a glass figurine and she doesn't know what it symbolises. It sounds very chilling, very dark and just very very excited to pick it up. I just think it sounds brilliant and it's been blurbed by Laura Purcell whose books I rate 100% so another one that I'm pleased to have found. Then we have The Shadow Sister by Lucinda Riley. This is the third book in the Seven Sisters series by Lucinda Riley. The series essentially is about six women who were adopted by Pa Salt and in the first book Pa Salt passes away and he leaves each of his daughters with a clue for them to explore and unlock their heritage. So each book has a dual timeline as the, the sisters or the daughters go along and find out about their pasts. These books are a little bit formulaic in that um, they're very similar you know you have your historical timeline and you have your present day sister discovering who she is timeline this particular one is about star it says on the back when she finally decides to follow her first clue it leads her to an antiquarian bookshop in london and to the start of a whole new world so i just like dipping in and out of these as and when i feel like it now i've got the third one i'll probably pick it up in the near future there is a slightly wider storyline that is running throughout all of the books which is whether Parsalt has actually passed away and who the seventh sister is, which we have yet to discover. And each book, Lucinda Riley drops a little bit more information about that storyline. So yeah, just one that I'm glad to have. Nothing mind-blowing, very enjoyable, very easy to read, a little bit formulaic, but just ones that I like to dip in and out of every now and then. I'm going to be honest and say this next book was almost 100% a cover by but having done a little bit more research I am very excited now to pick it up so it's Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud I mean just look at that cover so this is set in Trinidad and we're following an unconventional family unit we have mum Betty son Solo and then one of Betty's male colleagues so when Betty's husband dies she invites this male colleague to come and live with them and over time they become their own little functional family unit and then one evening Solo the son overhears Betty confessing a secret. Whatever that secret is it, it shocks him and jars him so much that he flees his home in Trinidad and he goes to live undocumented in New York. So on the back it says forged through loneliness broken by secrets saved by love and um yeah i'm just excited i mean it's a beautiful book it's the reason i picked it up but i am intrigued to get to it and it's just one another great one potentially to add to my list then we have small pleasures by claire chambers this is set in the 1950s and we are following the story of Jean, a small time journalist who lives a fairly mundane life until she is sent to cover the story of a woman who claims that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth. And so our story begins. I ummed and ahed about picking this one up in the bookshop for a long time because I'm just not sure if it's my type of book. What persuaded me in the end was reading a review on the inside flap which basically said the end sucker punched them in the gut. It was so unexpected and I just now am intrigued and I want to know what is going to happen. So I've picked it up, I'll add it to my list. I have since seen rather mixed things about it. Some people either really like it or some people really don't like it. It's kind of a bit marmitey. So I'm even more intrigued now to see where I sit on that spectrum. But yeah, one that I'm glad to have. Okay, we are nearly there. This next set of books I picked up this weekend in a secondhand bookshop. As I say, until we kind of put them all together, I didn't really realise how many there were. So let's just jump in. I'll be as quick as I can. We have uh, Sleeper's Castle by Barbara Erskine. Someone on this channel really recently recommended Barbara Erskine to me and I'm so sorry if it's you because I can't remember who it was. I was talking about another book that I'd read and they said to me, oh, you must read Barbara Erskine. And um, yeah, so I've decided to pick this one up. When I saw her name in the bookshop, I was like, oh, I recognise that name. So I swept this one up. So this is historical fiction. We have a dual timeline. I think possibly we have a little bit of time travel. I'm not really sure. We're following two women. We have Miranda who has moved to Hay to escape 
and then we have Katrin who lived 600 years before and she has a gift for foretelling the future which has embroiled her in a bloody revolt against English rule many centuries ago. Not really much to say, it kind of gives me um it kind of gives me Kate Mortony vibes so very excited to see Barbara Erskine has written a lot of books so if I enjoy this one there's a whole plethora out there that I can then go on and read so that is quite exciting so very very pleased to have this one oh very bright cover very pleased to have this one thank you to whoever recommended it to me I will try and prioritize picking it up soon then we have Vicious by V. E. Schwab if you watched my recent wrap-up you will know that I read and reviewed The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. E. Schwab and I wasn't overly impressed with it as unpopular an opinion as that is but I've heard really good things about V. E. Schwab's writing and it wasn't the writing style that put me off so much as the story so I wanted to give her another chance so I have picked this one up this is YA Urban Fantasy we're following two gentlemen Victor and Eli who start out as college roommates and then an experiment goes wrong which I think endows them with supernatural abilities and they become frenemies and we pick their story up sometime later I have seen um, quite a few people whose book opinions I really rate and appreciate have given this five stars so I'm going to try and not go in with too high expectations but at the same time I'm quite excited to see what I think and hopefully this one will be a slightly better story than I found Addie LaRue because as I say it wasn't the writing style I really liked Victoria Schwab's writing style it was the story so hopefully this one will be better. Another dual timeline book now, a little bit of a theme running through some of these. We have The Confession by Jesse Burton. So we have a story set in the 1980s. We are following Elise who meets and falls in love with an older woman, Connie. And Elise follows Connie to Hollywood and we get to experience some of the glamour of that particular time in history. Then we have a storyline set in 2017 and we're following Rose who feels a little bit lost in her life and Rose finds herself caring for Connie when she discovers that Connie may have information about Rose's mother who left when she was a very young baby. I always love a good dual timeline story as you can tell by some of the ones that I've picked up but I have also heard that the three female characters in this book are on point and I am all about that so enough said. And then literally as we were paying I happened to glance over at a row of hardbacks and I spotted Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan Maguire. Seanan Maguire? I think it is. And I literally gasped and rushed over and grabbed it and added it to the pile because this is a book which has been on my radar for a while but for some reason it's really expensive to get hold of in the UK which surprises me now I have hold of it and I can see actually how tiny the book is as well. It's done the rounds on booktube and the book community for a very long time. It's a story about the children in our well-known myths, legends and fairy tales and what happens after, so like the children of Narnia um, and I can't now think of any other children that might have been <laughs> in some kind of story and it's kind of the, the what happens after, the ever after um, and I'm intrigued because as I say I really thought that it would be more substantial than this, I think it's only just over 150 pages so kind of trying now to be as blind as possible because there's not really that much book to the story so we will see but just very very pleased to have picked this up as I say it's been on my radar for a while and I just haven't picked it up because of the cost of it so it was a good little bargain to spot and I'm sure that I will pick it up shortly. Next we have The Confessions of Franny Langton by Sarah Collins. This is giving me full on Laura Purcell dark gothic vibes and also the book is in perfect condition. I do not think that this has been read so that felt like a real win to me. So it says on the back, 1826 and all of London is in a frenzy. Crowds gather at the gates of the Old Bailey to watch as Franny Langton, maid to Mr and Mrs Benham, goes on trial for their murder. The testimonies against her are damning, slave, whore, seductress, and they may be the truth, but they are not the whole truth. For the first time, Franny must tell her story. 
It begins with a girl learning to read on a plantation in Jamaica and it ends in a grand house in London where a beautiful woman waits to be freed. But through her fevered confessions, one burning question haunts Franny Langton. Could she have murdered the only person she ever loved? This just sounds so good. It really also reminds me of Laura Purcell's The Corset, which again, I read and really enjoyed. So very, very pleased to find this one. Okay, next we have The Graces by Laura, I think it's Laura, Laura Eve. Um, this is a book which was one of the first ones that I picked up when we went into the bookshop and I was really really excited to have found it. Since I've come home and looked on Goodreads a number of the people that I'm friends with have rated it really lowly like one or two stars so now I don't know how I feel about it. Um, this is YA fantasy I think about witches. We're following our main character River who is obsessed with the witches or the graces but not all is as it seems and I really can't find anything more out about it than that. The back is really quite vague and as I say it's not hat for best reviews. It says on the back powerful, deadly, chilling and compelling. So I mean I'll give it a go at some point. It'll probably be one that gets thrown up in my random spreadsheet generator rather than one that I reach for particularly now I've seen the reviews. But yeah if you've read this let me know what you think because I was slightly disappointed to realise that not many people enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, just one to add to my list. Then I picked up The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil, very similar to Franny Langton in its dark gothic feel, this time set in Victorian England. So we are following a doll maker, Iris, who has always dreamed of being an artist and she agrees to pose for a pre-Raphaelite painter on the basis that he teaches her to paint. Unbeknown to Iris, she has also caught the eye of a second individual and I think that he becomes, this second individual becomes more and more obsessed with Iris and we follow the story as it unfolds. Honestly, when I read the back, it gave me chills, but I just thought it sounded so good. Possibly one to read in the summer when it doesn't get dark. We all know what a big wuss I am with scary books, but yeah very excited. And then we are on to our last few. We have The Truants by Kate Weinberg. This says on the back, Jess Walker is drawn into a tightly knit group of rule breakers in her first year at university and begins to experiment with a new version of herself. But the dynamic between the friends and their maverick professor begins to darken as they share secrets, lovers, and finally a tragedy. Soon Jess is faced with the question she fears most. What is the true cost of an extraordinary life. I mean, do I need to say more? Do I need to know more? Not really. Again, just one to add to my list that I think will be very, very intriguing. And the final book, thank you so much if you stuck with me, we have The Dinner Guest by BP Walter. This is a domestic noir thriller, which I don't think I have ever read that type of book before. And I'm not sure it was the first one that I picked up when we went into any of the shops. It just recognized it and I picked it up and I didn't even really read the back but it just sounds so so good. Four people walked into the dining room that night. One would never leave. Matthew the perfect husband, Titus the perfect son, Charlie the perfect illusion, Rachel the perfect stranger. Charlie didn't want Rachel at the book club. Matthew wouldn't listen. I mean with thrillers it's always best to go in as blind as possible but just something about it drew me to it and I'm really intrigued to see what is going to happen in the story. Probably one that I'll try and pick up ASAP but yeah very pleased to have it. So there you go a very big happy birthday to me that is a lot of books I am aware hopefully now I'll be done for a little while at least. Thank you very much if you made it all the way to the end I appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video please give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. If you have read any of the books that I have hauled today and you would like to suggest some priorities for me or offer some insight on a few that I'm now not so sure about that would be fantastic feel free to leave me a comment I always love to chat more with you guys about bookish things and just all kinds as always I hope that you are keeping safe and well take care and I'll see you soon